Hey everyone and welcome back and now we are on day eight of this series in which we're learning how to use Apache Spark within Microsoft Fabric. I hope you've been enjoying the series so far. If you have, then leave me a comment, like this video, do all that good stuff, share it with someone that you might find this useful. That would be really helping me out. Thank you very much. Now today we got a very exciting topic. We're going to be looking at data frame filtering. So we're going to be looking at the various ways that we can use to filter our data frames. As ever, this code is available on GitHub, github.com forward slash learn Microsoft Fabric. I'll leave a link in the description so you can follow along with this tutorial as well. And we're going to be starting off with getting some data that we're going to be filtering. So what I'm going to be doing is calling spark.sql. So this is the first time that we've seen this. This is how we can read some data from our Lakehouse tables into a data frame. So to do this, if you're familiar with SQL, this will look familiar to you. We're just going to call spark.sql and we're going to select star, which means get all the columns from Spark September, which is the name of our lake house here. And our table is called property sales, this one. Now this is the same as if you, you can actually drag this into the notebook and it will give you the same piece of code here. So let's just run this. Now we've got a limit of a thousand, so it's going to only return a thousand rows, but this table uh, has only got like three rows in it. So it's not particularly important. Okay, so now we have some data and this is what it looks like. We're using the same data set. So if you've been following this series, you're familiar with this. We've got some property sales data and it's got the dollar values of three different sale prices for houses. It's got the type of the house, the city, the agent that sold it and the address. So let's look at how we can filter this data frame. We can start with some simple methods and we'll kind of build up the complexity. So the first and kind of most obvious way of filtering a data frame is by calling df, which is what we call our data frame up here, df.filter. So this is the core kind of filtering function available to us within Spark. And we can pass in here, okay, what column do we want to do our filtering on? And what do we want it to be equal to? So here we're saying, okay, I want to filter our data frame and I want to filter it and only return values where the city is equal to New York. So if I just run this, we're actually going to get the other ones come through as well. And as well as kind of equality, we can do the opposite. So not equal to. So in the second uh, statement here, I'm also asking it to get us all of the cities that are not New York. And there's two ways to actually do the not equal to. One is kind of the more traditional Pythonic way of doing exclamation mark equals. And you can also use this df.filter with a tilde, but to me, I don't really like this way. It's not very readable, at least for me. I think this is more understandable for people in the data space. You can read that very simply and readability to me is very important. So this is what we get. From our first statement, we've called dot show, right? So it's gonna print out the results into the notebook for us to have a look at. And bearing in mind, this is what our original data looks like. So New York, there's only one row that has this. So we'd expect to see one row, which is what we've got here from our first statement. Our second statement is showing two results. So everything that's not New York. And the same for the third one, because it's doing the same functionality, it's just expressed in a different way, a worse way, IMO. Okay, so let's expand this a little bit and we can use some other pieces of conditional logic to filter in different ways. This one is starts with and ends with. So if your column is of type string, then you can use starts with and ends with by passing in a string here. So here we're looking for columns that start with L. So we've got Los Angeles here and cities that end with TA, which is Atlanta in the second example. We can also pass in multiple conditions. So here, what we're saying is, okay, from this data frame, I want you to filter it and I want you to get me all of the cities that is not Atlanta and the sales price is greater than 400,000. So let's just see what that gets us. 
Okay, so if we were to just do one of these, what would we get? Well, with one of them, where the city is not equal to Atlanta, it would look like this. And one of the sales prices is 345,000, and one of them is 700,000. So if we add this second kind of condition into this filtering statement, that's gonna remove the lower sales price so that we've only got this 745,000. So this is how we can work with multiple conditions under the AND scenario, and it's just a single ampersand for doing the AND. We can also do an OR condition. So if the city is equal to Atlanta, or the city is equal to Los Angeles. So we're saying, okay, if it's either of these cities, then return me the results. So if I just call this, okay, and these are our results. So we've returned two records here, one for Los Angeles and one for Atlanta. But this is a bit clumsy, writing it like this. What we could also do is check if our the row value is a member of a list. So we can define our list. So now we're gonna rewrite this statement that we've just looked at using a slightly different method. So what I've done is I've defined a list called cities we care about. Sorry to anyone that lives in New York, but cities we care about is Atlanta and Los Angeles. And then in our filter statement, we can call in, and we can pass in that list. So we're saying, okay, filter this data frame, look in the cities column, and if the value is any of the values that we've defined in this list, then keep it in the data set. If it's not, I don't wanna see it. So if we run this, this is what this is gonna look like. And it's exactly the same as what we got before, but it's a bit more scalable, right? Because if we've got 50 columns in here, then we don't wanna be writing this kind of statement. You know, we want to be adding it to a list. And then as new cities get added to that list, we don't have to change this line of code, okay? So that's membership of a list. Now, another thing we can do is contains. So we looked previously at starts with and ends with, but we can also do contains. So in this example, we've got df.type contains house. So we've got a few different we again go back up to our data of the types we've got a detached house an apartment and just a house so what we want is only the records that have meant that mention house anywhere in their value so this is what this looks like and we've returned two results we've got the detached house and the house so that's kind of using this spark function and if you're a SQL user then probably what's screaming out to you right now is, oh, this is a bit like uh, the like functionality in SQL, where you can define select star from table, where this value is like, and you use the uh, percentage signs on either side. Well, funnily enough, you can do exactly the same thing within Spark. So you can also call df.filter, df.type.like, so this is our column name, and then we're calling dot like. And you can use the same percentage sign. And obviously if you know SQL, then there's three different main options that we, how we can use this. If we put the percentage sign at the beginning of the string and at the end of the string, then we're saying, okay, return me all the values where house is included, either at the end, at the beginning, anywhere in the middle, I don't care. In this second example here, where we're calling house with the percentage sign after, we're saying, okay, this string must start with house. It can have anything after it, but it needs to start with house, okay? And then finally, we have kind of ends with. So if you put the percentage sign at the beginning of this string, there's gonna be percent avenue. What that's saying is, okay, get me anything I don't care what comes first, but the final characters of that string have to be this. So let's call all of these now and see what we get. Okay, so we can see that the first one, this house with two percentage signs uh, looks like this. So we've got anywhere that house exists in the string, return that. So we've got two results. With this one, we're saying, 
Okay, get me only the records that start with house. So now we're only getting this one. The detached house has been dropped. And finally, we've got ones that end with avenue, and this is the df.address. And we've only got one record that does that. So another way that we can use SQL expressions is like this. So we can call filters that are a bit more SQL-y, let's say. So df.filter, and we're gonna pass in a string, which is basically a SQL statement. And it's gonna be city is not equal to Los Angeles in kind of these single apostrophes. And we've also can use these kind of two angle bracket things that we see in SQL for meaning not equal to as well. So these are gonna return the same results. Okay, so we can also do df.where, and you might see this in some documentation, but for any of the functions that I've shown you, calling df.where is the same as df.filter. So it gives the same result within this Spark SQL API. It does vary a little bit in some other parts of Spark, but for everything that we're doing, it's the same. So for example, if I do df.where, it gives us the same results. Just something to bear in mind. Okay, that's it for today's video on filtering. I hope you found that useful. If you did, make sure you're subscribed. If you're not already, leave a comment or anything that you're not clear about or you want it to be clarified or any questions you have about using Spark in Microsoft Fabric. Tomorrow we'll have another video for you we're gonna be continuing our quest into Spark data frames in Microsoft Fabric. All of the code is on GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description. Like this video if you're feeling generous. I'll see you tomorrow.